Yeah, when he's ready. ready. So, so we, we could, could start, start now. now. All right. All right. Okay. okay. We're, we're live, live and we're, and we're rolling. rolling. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we uh, have we a have program, program for you today, and I think the topic, topic that we're going to be discussing, discussing is one that is has, one to, that be has to be part, part of the drug community, community across, across the country. The country. Uh, but I'm going to ask uh, Brother, um, uh, Brother Joy, if you would introduce the panel to us. Yes. You are muted, Baba Jiwe. Okay. Thank you, Brother Brother Brown. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, this morning um, we have with us um, in our New York State Coordinating Committee for the Pan-African Federalist Movement, we have Brother Jumain Nogo Faye. Brother Jumai is, uh, in addition to being a member of our New York State uh, PAFM committee, Brother Jumai is also the um, Secretary General for the International Preparation Committee of the Pan-African Federalist Movement. So we're very ha lucky to have him on our New York State committee. Um, in addition to um, Brother Jumai, we have Brother Charles Asukile Mitchell, who's also a member of a New York State Coordinating Committee. Brother Mitchell is also a, an associate of uh, Dr. Leonard Jeffries for a long time. He will also be joining us this morning. And myself, yours truly, Baba G. Wade Damu Dillard, I am the chairperson of the New York State Coordinating Committee. Um, our territory of interest is, is the New York State and New Jersey African population. That is continental Africans as well as people of African descent in New York State and New Jersey. This population represents approximately 3 million Africans. And our target is to reach out to as many of these 3 million that we can to build support for the creation of the United African States. This is the, the primary mission of our uh, committee. The Pan-African Federalist Movement is a grassroots movement. Um, the New York State Committee was founded on March 8th of 2020. So we're, we're approximately uh, a year and two months in existence. Brother Jemai has been involved with the movement uh, for five years. Brother Jemai was a part of the uh, initiation of uh, establishment of a charter um, going back to December 18th of uh, the founding of the Pan-African Federalist Movement. So our objective is to reach out to as many of of our population in the New York State, New Jersey metropolitan area as we can and get their direct support. And their support will be represented by, um, if not direct membership to a, a committee or the establishment of a local coordinated committee, or they can become involved uh, just spreading the word, building our, our database of supporters throughout the New York State and New Jersey uh, area. Um, the New York State Committee is operating under the umbrella of the North American 
Coordinating Committee. The North American Coordinating Committee is headed by Brother uh, Amsata. Um, he is he is located in Florida, but he is overseeing the development of the movement throughout the North American and can Canadian regions. So his committee is a regional committee, North America and, and Canada. Um, I would like to introduce to you Brother Jumai. Brother Jumai, because he, is, he has been involved in this movement for over five years, I'd like to have Brother Jumai give you uh, some of the in-depth history of the Pan-African Federalist Movement as it exists now. Brother Jumai. Thank you. Thank Greetings. you. Babu Jumai, Babu Jumai, thank you. Yes. Uh, my name is Jumai Ndongofai, and I'm the General Secretary of the International Preparatory Committee of the first Pan-African Federalist Congress. The Pan-African Federalist Movement as Baba Jiwe, the New York State coordinator just said, is a grassroots coalition of individuals and organizations. I'm talking about African people, African individuals and organizations of Africans throughout the world. As Baba Jiwe said, we are organized in regional committees, national committees, and local committees, state committees for the case of the US. The Pan-African Fellows Movement, so uh, as you I said, uh, I'm, I'm the General Secretary of the International Preparatory Committee of the first Pan-African Federalist Congress. The Pan-African Federalist Movement is being built around the call for that particular Congress I mentioned, the first Pan-African Federalist Congress. This initiative came out of Dakar in 2015, February, to be more precise, February 26. We gathered Pan-Africanists in Senegal. Many of them were companion of Sheikh Anta Job already. And we discussed on what is the way forward for the African unity project. Since Gaddafi has, is gone uh, and Mugabe and all of them, uh, you know, there is no one right now really pushing for the project of the African unity. After discussion, we came to the conclusion that maybe those who came before us were going by on it by the wrong way, from the top down, whether it is Kruma, whether it is Gaddafi or others. So we decided to change uh, the direction and started to discuss on how about if we go from the bottom, from the people themselves. And this is why we said, okay, to test that, let's send a call for a gathering of all the people who believe in the urgency of uniting the African state in order to give African people worldwide the kind of power that they need to be on the international, to be, to be taken, taken seriously on the international scene. This is how we issued the call for the first Pan-African Fellows Movement, which I'm going to read now. The call sign is a, a series of questions in which we ask people, if you find yourself answering yes to any one of those questions, then we are looking for you. Then you are a Pan-African Federalist, potentially. So the call started with, do you believe that the political unification of the African state is a matter of utmost urgency for Africans on the continent and in the diaspora? If you answer yes, then you could be part of us. Do you agree with Kwame Nkrumah when he stated that it is clear that we must find an African solution to our problem and that this can only be found in African unity? Divided we are weak, united Africa could become one of the greatest forces for good in the world. If you answer yes, then we want you. Do you think that Sheikh Ante Job was right when he said African unity, I feel, will come from the base and develop as an undercurrent to the present political sterility and economic stagnancy rampant on our continent. If you agree with him, then yes, we want you to be part of this movement. 
Are you sick and tired of watching African being hope helpless when faced with natural or man-made calamities? If you answer yes, yes, we want you. Do you believe that being an African ought to be an asset, not a li liability? If you answer yes, then you can be a member of the PI, can be, you should join our rank. Do you believe in the need for a strong African state that could demand for and expect to get the reparation of the wrongs that were done to Africans throughout slavery and colonialism? If you answer yes, then you are a, a, a target of the PAFM. And we end the call with saying, we look forward to building with you and the millions of Pan-African Federalists, uh, a, a, a strong Pan-African Federalist movement that is committed to uni uniting politically all the African states before the end of the decade 2020, 2030. So this is the call. The reason why we sent the call is that as Senegalese, we didn't, we, don't, we didn't have a mandate. We said, okay, so let's start with initiating committees and then based on the call, call for a pre-Congress and that could launch officially the movement. We were able to, uh, to hold this pre-Congress in Accra, December 8 to the December 13 in 2018, where there were about maybe seven to 800 Africans throughout 60 African countries throughout the world all continents who came, except Asia, I would say, who came to our Ghana, and the pre-Congress was opened by the president of Ghana, Nana Akufo Addo, who opened the pre-Congress uh, with us. And then from there, we elected what we call an international preparatory committee. This international preparatory committee is in charge of organizing the Congress. We want people to come together individuals and organization and decide on how they are going to move forward in materializing this African unity, uh, the, the, materializing the United African state as an entity of, by, and for the African people. So fundamentally, this is what um, the, uh, the, the, the movement is. And we are, we, the more we work on this initiative, the more we realize, in fact, this is the right way to go Anyway, it has to be a grassroots movement. It cannot be a top-down movement because the sovereignty belongs to the African people. And it's African people to decide on how they want to unite their states, not the top, those who are only uh, holding on or who, who are uh, uh, not the owners of the sovereignty of our state. Fundamentally, this is the idea. So uh, uh, as Baba Jiwe said, and as I just said now, those questions are any one of them, if you answer yes to any one of them, you are a Pan-African Federalist. By Pan-African Federalist, we mean by somebody who is sincerely committed, who sincerely believe that a united African state, a political entity for the African made out of a unification of the sovereign state of the African people is a necessity. That is a pan And it started with Marcus Garvey, who called for the United States of Africa, and then Kwame Nkrumah picked up the torch, called for the United States of Africa, Gaddafi did, but the Pan-African Federalist Movement is calling for a United African state, not a United State of Africa. There's a big difference between the two. Because the United States of Africa means the sovereign state on the continent of Africa coming together and forming a political entity. For the Pan-African Federalist Movement, it's all the African states in the world coming together and forming a political entity, which will be called the United African State. Because for us, Jamaica or Haiti, as African states, sovereign African states, as much as Senegal or, Mon or Liberia are. So this is what the change, fundamental change that we have. Brought. Because it, the Pan-African on the 21st century has to think globally, has to think geopolitically in creating a state that, or like Marcus Garvey actually said, a state on which the sun never sets. That is in a nutshell what I wanted to say, Babu Jewel. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Jemai. Thank you so much. Now, um, as I said, I met Brother Jemai in March of 2020, 
Brother Jemai read the call to me at that first meeting, and at that first meeting there were seven of us. We we got together at a juice bar up in up on 125th Street in Harlem, seven of us. And Brother Jemai spoke about the PAFM. And when he read the call, um, in particular, uh, I was very moved by the fact that um, in his description of the Pan-African Federalist approach, <clears throat> that the United African States would not only include continental Africans, but it would also include Africans in the diaspora and all people of African descent in the diaspora. And by virtue of, of that, that um, philosophy, it means that um, those of us who, who have been born and raised in um, North America, for example, um, by virtue of our, of our African heritage, would be um, eligible and be concerned and considered as a state, one of the member states of the United African States. So this, this feature um, intrigued me because I felt that this is the way it should be. Um, so that triggered my involvement. And at that, at that point, March 8th of 2020, we formed our first, our first um, local committee, which is the New York State Coordinating Committee. Um, at that time, I was also selected by the, the, the group to act as the chair of this committee, so which I've been doing since that time. Now, um, just over a year after establishing our committee, we were able to hold our first town hall meeting, which is, which is an outreach to all African organizations in the New York State and New Jersey region. <clears throat> because the PAFM is a coalition building movement. Our, our, our concept and our approach is that um, there are many organizations that have a Pan-African impetus and are working toward um, the, the liberation of African people around the world. And that we should all be working in support of each other. So this, this is one of the underlying um, concepts of our approach, and that is to build coalition and work with all of the other organizations that have committed themselves to developing and moving African people toward a, a, the uh, fruition and manifestation of a truly Pan-African existence. Now, Admittedly, there are different approaches among the various organizations, but we believe that by working in concert with each other and in mutual support of each other, we have the highest uh, chances and the highest expectation of being successful to see that the United African States becomes a reality. And we would like to see this happen by the year of 2030. So we, we're working on a 10 year um, projection of seeing a United African States being in existence. Um, so in March of this year, March 14th, we held our first town hall meeting, which was to bring together um, organizations and individuals of like mind that are working toward a Pan-African uh, realization. And that town hall meeting was very, very successful. We had over 60 participants and we had participants that um, were not only um, in New York State and New Jersey, but also um, some international participation as well. So it was a very, very successful town hall. Um, we intend to continue holding town hall meetings throughout the year. So our next town hall meeting is actually scheduled to take place 
on May 16th. Now the May 16th town hall meeting is designed to um, focus on the youth mobilization. We feel strongly that uh, no movement of this type is going to be successful without the direct participation of our youth. And our youth, uh, both here in, in uh, America as well as in Africa, as a matter of fact, um, we, we consider youth to be um, nominally people up to the age of 35. And it turns out that um, in the continent of Africa, uh, youth are a majority of the population. So um, that's a very strong indication that we, we are not going to be <laughs> successful without the direct involvement of our youth. So this town hall meeting, um, we're reaching out to all like-minded individuals who want to take part in, in our movement, either directly as, as members of a committee or um, just in terms of giving their support and building our database of supporters here in North America. Um, we'll be very glad to share the um, flyer, which is the inf information that gives the dating and the link to join um, that town hall meeting on May 16th. And um, we're looking forward to uh, having some further contact with your audience as well as your supporters. Um, we appreciate having the time to make a presentation to you. And um, if there are any questions, um, we'd be glad to um, field them um, between myself and Brother Jumai. Um, uh, do we? Do you know if we have our brother Asukile on board yet, or is he still attempting to join us? Um, brother Asukile, are you with us yet? Or? Okay. No. no. I, I, would, I would. I would. Uh, I have uh, something. Uh, uh, I Okay. okay. I would I like would to read uh, the uh, uh, goal and, and the purpose the of the uh, organization. organization. And, uh, and uh, it is uh, an extension an of Michael Scott, Kwame Kinyele, I mean, all, all of them uh, uh, have been sent to brothers. brothers. Uh, and uh, and sisters were on the path, path and realized that we, we have, have to have a united, united spirit, spirit at home, at home and, and on the continent. When I when say at home, I mean the past, but we are. We are. And, and uh, uh, I was looking, looking at, at the Casper report, report the other day. day. And, and the Casper report, report on the new scramble, scramble for Africa. For Africa. Uh, uh, I mean, is there is a lot, lot of that, that Durrell? Durrell? Is, is, is there is a lot there of Because I hear a lot of feedback. Yeah, you're... Okay. The Casper report laid out. Can you hear me? Hello? I, I hear you. The Casper hear you. report laid out... Laid out. One... one minute. Minute. Modern, modern cities being, being built, built in Africa. Africa. Those, Those are cities that would be that run would be from run solar, solar energy, energy um, um, uh, with, uh, the with new uh, technology, uh, technology. Because, because that's, what's, that's here what's here now. And these and 100, these 100 cities, cities will house, will house each, each one, one of them over, over a million, a million people. people. That's, That's a hundred million, million people, people. Uh, uh, from these uh, uh, cities, cities that have been built right, right now, now as, as we speak. speak. Everybody, Everybody is, is investing in, in Africa, Africa, except the diaspora. Diet. Now, now, the Russians, Russians are there, are <coughs> the Germans are there, there, the Europeans the are there, the Americans are there. 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 They are They're building, building the infrastructure, infrastructure for these, these cities, cities because, because they know that Africa, Africa is the future. 
Africa still has the majority of uh, resources, gold, diamonds, cobalt, you can have computers and cell phones, but Africa, but Africa has, has the largest, the largest of all, all of these, these precious, precious minerals than any on the planet. planet. So, so we, we need, need to be, to be involved. involved. With, with the African, the African Union, Union, as you said, we need to be involved in grassroots organizations in Africa. Africa. I'm just repeating, I'm just repeating what you said because, because I see all different, 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 different organizations, organizations and countries, countries invest in Africa. 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 So, so we, we need to be connected, connected. we need to be invested, we need to be building along. With, with and Africa, Africa is reaching, reaching out. out, and I, and I, 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 I hope you talk about, about this is my question. Africa, Africa is reaching out, out to, to African Americans to, to be a part of this new building, new structure of these hundred African cities. So, so can we talk about? Africa's role in reaching out to African Americans. And, and uh, who and, and how do we connect with what I know, I know Dr. Dr. Jeffrey is, uh, is in the uh, uh, Can you tell, tell us, us more? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. Was um, is that a, is that directed to to me or is that to our brother? It, it's, it's directed to you. Now, now let, me, let, me, let me say this, this, so, this is something that we have to do. Uh, uh, there's, there's, there's a room really light that you can buy for about $40, and it, and will, it will improve our image 100%. In other words, other you words, can, can you be able to see us better, better and, and so, so forth. forth. Uh, uh, the, the, I, I, I love that the brother has a story, but he's coming across... His, his image, image is very dark, dark and you know, people's attention span ain't for a minute. And, and when, when they ain't clear, clear, they, they turn, turn away too much. So I'm just saying, saying we got to pick up our technology. And, and it's, it's not, not the problem. problem. So, so I'm just saying, we, we, we got to get ourselves to get on this thing. Just on trying to try to make it. Make it. So, so if you would really go ahead really and answer the question, question for me, and, and for us, us in terms of Africa reaching out to Africa and those hundreds of people, the Casper Court leads out that the are being built right, out right, now, right, now, right, right now, now, and everybody else is making money, big money, and we could be doing the same thing. Yes, well, um, one of, one of our one of our major issues as Africans is that our, our diversity is vast. Um, we we're not a monolith either um, in terms of political philosophies or cultural um, foundations. So um, this is why uh, the PAFM's approach is is one of not trying to determine um, who and what individual approach is the correct approach, but to appreciate that because of the diversity, we have many, many facets um, and many directions that we need to address and approach in terms of progress. So, um, we, we try to find out, first of all, what are the strengths that we have available to us, and based on those strengths that we have available, put together and pursue an, uh, an action plan that will improve our particular situation as African people in the world. So that means um, there, there is a technical uh, aspect involved when you speak about um, energy, for example, alternate energy and sustainable energy. There's a technology involved that we need people who are knowledgeable in that technology and can play an active role in forming policies that would, would address 
the questions of climate change and sustainable energy sources. That's just one, one facet of, of hundreds of facets and hundreds of issues that need to be addressed. Um, food security is a big one. Um, medical um, access to, to, to good medical care and, and health issues are a big one. Um, housing itself is a big one. You know, in, in so many of our, our African uh, communities, we have people who are virtually homeless. They're, they're immigrants. They're in a state where they can't even secure um, adequate housing. We have, we have thousands of, of individuals in, in our African community that are struggling just with the pure questions of survival from day to day. So we, we have many fronts on which progress and, and, and um, real dedication is necessary. Now, this is why our approach in terms of working toward the unification of Africa under a, a governmental structure that would establish Africa as a world power, regaining Africa's true sovereignty that has been totally compromised to the colonial forces that are still very much in control of the resources of Africa. So this is why our, our, um, our feeling that we need to first of all address the question of um, establishing a strong national government that will now be able to address a host of other issues and problems that need to be solved for African people around the world. So this is our approach. Now, this is also why we feel let's be in support of other movements. You know, some of us have technical background, some of us have political and legal background. Some of us have cultural history background. These are all strengths that are necessary in order to further us in, in, in terms of our position in the world. Some of us are already become um, disillusioned with the, uh, the so-called American dream. So I know quite a few individuals who've already decided that they're, they're prepared to move out of the United States of America and become citizens in, in African countries. Now, this is a movement that is, is, uh, is to be expected because uh, those of us here in, the United, in, in America, um, we're still dealing with issues that, that are a carryover from, from slavery today. So there are many aspects of, of how Africans are going to respond to their lot in life, and, and we're at different levels. Um, there's no one size fits all. I, that's, that's basically the way we feel. So uh, I personally have chosen to, to, to dedicate my time to this approach of let's start from the ground and, and, and get support and work toward the unification of Africa under one governmental structure and then address some of the individual problems that face us around the world, be they economic, um, environmental, health, food, what have you. Um, I, I hope that kind of uh, addresses your, your question. Uh, Brother Jemai, I don't know if you would like to add something to that. Yeah, yeah um, I'm, the only no, thing I'm going to add, I think that this is... The only thing I would add, hello? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, the only thing I would add is that, um, yeah, you asked the question who else are involved. The Pan African Fellows Movement is waving, waging a campaign. A campaign needs credibility and it needs visibility too. So this is why people like Professor Jeffries, and we hope that you yourself, uh, Elder Clemson, is yes. considered a champion of the movement. People who have built 
a credibility in the cow community and who could lend a portion of that credibility to the Pan-African Federalist Movement to make it a credible movement, just like a campaign. A campaign needs credibility. We have what we call champions of Professor Obenga, Teofil Obenga, that many know, is also one of the champions of the movement. We have what we call also honorary presidents who also lend credibility to the campaign. The former president of Mali, the first head of the African Union, uh, President Alpha Omar Konare, the uh, president of the former president of uh, of Cap Verde, for example, uh, uh, President Olusegun Obasanjo of Niger, or former president Olusegun, many former presidents, and we have also uh, are involved in in the movement in in one way or the other to lend their credibility to uh, to the movement. We have, for example, uh, Professor uh, uh, Ibrahim Afal, who was the Under Secretary of the United Nations, who is a, one of the champions uh, of the movement. And, and many of them we are building and, and, and building on, in, in, in terms of looking for people who could be champions of the movement, who could be lend their credibility. We have also artists that are what we call, we call them ambassadors. Ambassadors lend their visibility. A campaign need visibility. And we recruiting ambassadors you know, uh, musicians, you know, soccer stars, basketball stars, all kinds of stars who could be uh, help in the visibility of the movement. We have, for example, uh, Tikenja, we have, uh, uh, you know, from Mali, we have uh, uh, the other, uh, let's say, Mutabaruka, for example, from Jamaica. All of these are uh, uh, ambassadors of the movement because they can lend part of the visibility. So. And we are in the building, and uh, uh, Brother Clemson, uh, we would certainly reach out to you as one of the champions of the movement. And you know, your role will be to help us recruit champions and help us identify people who could lead the PAFM in their own community and be like Baba Jiwe, you know, state coordinators or local coordinators in cities like where Brooklyn, where you live. We will need a local. Uh, uh, neighborhood committee uh, in, in Brooklyn. That's how the movement is built. It's a brown, it's a ground up movement. The idea of building these community committees is that we are going to be going to a Congress. Okay. The Congress, Africans will be represented by these structures. The New York State Committee will send representative. The Senegal's National Committee will send representative. The Jamaica National Committee, you know, we will come as people with uh, from countries, from na nations, from communities, who will bring the point of view of their community to the Congress. Not like the previous Congresses where people who just, just anyone get up and there's a lot of talk, emptiness. We want something concrete where people will have a mandate to bring the voice of Africans in their communities to the Congress so that we could decide together how we're gonna proceed in accelerating this unification by 2020. 20, 2030, I mean, 2030. I don't, know, I don't know if that answered your question. Yes, it does. Uh, Brother Charles has uh, just typed us that uh, we should check out the- uh, yeah. By coded, coded bias and artificial intelligence. intelligence, the racism, the racism that is being encoded, encoded in artificial, artificial intelligence. intelligence. So, so um, um, that was I just I wanted to put it out that, that the boss, I, I think he's he young, uh, even though he can't he can talk, can talk about, about these things, things himself. himself. That was my chat. I put that in the chat, brother, brother Brown. Oh, that was your chat. Yes. Okay. okay I just I just did it in response to to the little the little conversation we had in in terms of sabotage. Oh, okay. That, that brought to mind a, a a documentary that I saw that was very interesting. As a young sister that did the research for that, she's a PhD, but she did a lot of research into the built-in racist racial bias in in the um, in the internet industry through algorithms you know the people who that who create these algorithms in the internet um they they um 
establish certain uh, controls, and those controls are are inadvertently based on on um, racist attitudes and and even subconscious racism that they're not even aware of them themselves. And it's a very fascinating documentary uh, because it shows the depth to which um, the racism has filtered into the internet world. You know, so very often when um, you Google something on the internet, um, information is gathered on you and that information is, is then used to, to uh, actually um, perform some measure of, of brainwashing in terms of what kind of things pop down, pop on, pop up on your your computer without you asking for it, but you're always getting these these little uh, pop ups that happen, you know. But that's that's a whole nother subject <laughs> to, that we could get. No, into. no, but but, but, but but we, we should, should check, check that out, out. Yeah. because so all, all of that builds your profile. profile. That's they right. keep a profile on all of them, brother. Exactly. And especially and if you are an African thinker, they, they, they know all of them. Exactly. Because they're, they're cold cold That's right. Uh, what you talk, what you talk about, about as to your profile. Your profile. If, if they can let them know. So I just want to throw that out. But, but while we're on, on the subject, subject uh, I mean, I was, I, 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 I was just saying something about, about that. that. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I said I, said, I, I wanted, wanted to say something, something about, about that. that. Go, Go ahead. ahead. The, the, the fundamental, fundamental issue, issue is that, that as, individuals, as individuals, we cannot, we cannot resist, resist the past. The past. There's, no There's no way. way. But as, as a state, state with the power of the state, we can certainly resist. And this, and this is, is what, what makes, makes a United, United African, African State even more relevant, relevant today, today with this new technology. technology. Because, because right, right now, now there is no African, African state, state that could certainly say that it is sovereign. And, and even, even, even their situation is even, even more dangerous, dangerous with the with internet, internet today. today. They cannot, they cannot protect, protect themselves against, against the, the new technology. technology. As As somebody like a group, like a group of Chinese could decide to shut down any African state today. And they have, they have no means of resistance. resistance. They don't have they don't means. Have means. So, so it makes it more relevant, relevant today to create a, a, a power that, that could have, have the means, means to protect, to protect us, us against, against all these, these new forms form of violation of our sovereignty and liberty. It's fundamental. Hello? Yes. No. No. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Also, so, uh, are you finished, Brother Juma? Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah done. I'm done. Oh, also, I'd like to just add that um, this is uh, this is not expressly um, mentioned in our campaign, but it's um, when we go back in history and 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 see how many times the um, movement toward a Pan African development has been thwarted by eliminating a particular charismatic leader who has been leading the charge along those lines. You know, you don't have to go back too far to see how they literally either assassinated a partic particular individual who was pushing for a Pan-African development or they undermine the leadership of a country who is moving toward a Pan-African development. So um, we feel that it's really necessary to have a movement that is not being spearheaded by one charismatic individual or one charismatic organization. We need to have soldiers on the ground that are working in such kinds of numbers that the movement can't be so easily thwarted by eliminating one individual or one organization. So that's one of the underlying things of the Pan-African Federalist Movement that, that really wanted me to commit myself to it because, uh, you know, Pan-Africanism is not a new idea. But, you know, once they um, chopped Africa up at the Berlin Congress back in the 18, 1800s, 
before the turn of the century, 19th century, um, once they cut Africa up into individual pieces that were belonging to the various colonial powers, that was the beginning of, of the, 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 the real destruction of what Africa was prior to the invasion of the European powers. And so, it's, as I said, it's not an expressed um, part of our movement, but it certainly is an understood result that could be uh, accomplished by having our, our movement successful, because this is the beginning of, of, of getting back to an Africa that has the world stature that existed before Africa was chopped up by the Europeans. And um, this is why our, we, we feel that the approach of, of, of first of all, establishing one um, federal government structure is key because that, that's the beginning of, of the point at which Africa can now begin to um, unify the various member states politically um, establish a common currency, establish a, a common um, citizenship, to establish a, a common approach to existing in the world as a world power, not as a small individual member state. You know, so um, this this is is really one of the underlying ideas in, in our movement is that we, we really want to see Africa be returned to its, its uh, state of world stature and, and, and regain its true sovereignty from, these, from the imperial powers that have basically usurped that power by cutting up Africa. Brother Asukile, you're muted. Brother Asukile, can you unmute yourself? I guess he can't hear me. Can everyone hear me? You're you're muted, brother Jemai. Yeah, we yeah, can hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, I see, brother. I see, brother Asukile, but I he I don't think he can hear me. I can't hear him. What, what? I just, I just revealed, revealed the African sign. Okay. Did, Did you? Come again. Brother, Brother Shaw. Shaw. Brother Shaw. Uh, uh, Brother Shaw. Uh, Maybe Shaw is muted, muted too. too. He is muted for some. Okay. okay. Um. um well, well, let me, let me, let me throw this in here because, because uh, uh, one, one of the things, things that, that I've noticed, noticed is that, that there's, there's so much so new technology, technology in terms of uh, solar, solar energy, energy being made very cheap to cause and letting us electricity. That's a whole new world that is coming into being. And, and it's a much, much more simplified uh, method, method of bringing new, new calling and new ways, ways of building, even, even building the for you. For example, if you take uh, if you if take you take which, which everybody is doing now, now. But, but hemp is not just, just for medicinal uh, uh, purposes, purposes. But, but, but you can make up the things from You can make from paper, paper to, uh, uh, I mean, yellow material, instead of wood, you can use hemp, mix it with uh, other material, and you have a material that's really strong, and plastic, and strong, and connect, and it's much cheaper because you can get, so we need to be set up the factory that are set up by black people on the continent, and, and even, even red, red here. here. The future, the future is ours. I mean, we did we a program did last on, on Ethiopian South. 
the rise the of the black, black man. man. And the and energy that is flowing into, into the earth is, is the energy, energy that, that we, we can tap, tap into because it is our time. It's like the sap you would rise from the root of the tree, of the tree and causing the leaves, the nimble, and the blossom. And blossom and you you that's what's that's happening. What's happening you because because we're one we're with, one the with the and, and, and all and we all need to do is put our mind collectively to build this African future. And to and know to that, know, and we can, we do, can that. do that. There's, 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 there's nothing, nothing on earth, earth that can stop us because it is the power of the creator working through us to bring it about. So I'm just pleased to be with you, brothers, this morning. And yes, I'll, I'll help any way I can. And uh, I appreciate you uh, ax asking me, you know, uh, so yeah, I'm I'm pleased. Uh, okay, we we our program is uh, unless we have something else we want to add. We um, approaching a, an hour. We generally try to run for about an hour, so we have more time. So, brother. Uh, uh, you know, brother uh, Indomo, Indongo, Indongo. Uh, perhaps you can add something before we leave. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I will add something and let Baba Jewe, our chair, to close uh, for the PFM, and then you can close. Yeah, this was a wonderful opportunity, um, Elder uh, Baba Clemson, to come on your program and to explain to people who listen to your program what the Pan-African Service Movement is. You know. yes. Baba Jiwe, could you mute your microphone? Okay. Let, me, let me just see if, let me see if this works. Baba, Baba Jiwe, could you mute your microphone? I have, I have brother um, Asukile on my phone. He wants to try to say something. Yeah, Bob, good. Go ahead. All right. Good, good morning, good afternoon, family and other places. Uh, I'm glad that uh, even though I wasn't able to uh, be on today, that Baba G way, Baba G Ma laid out some things uh, that are important to us. Uh, we really want the community, if you're concerned, especially for, uh, one for our young people, we want you to be involved in this youth town hall. It's very important. Uh, because it's not only your future that's at stake, it's the future of uh, generations of African people. This is a critical time for us as African people, as the Chinese are making inroads, uh, have made serious inroads into the continent, uh, and trying to establish a new Silk Road. Uh, they're pushing Africans off their land, they're setting up uh, clandestine military bases. The United States has over 20 bases in this African command or AFRICOM. Uh, France, as we know, has continued to exploit this uh, uh, connection to its own colonies and the whole of the capital. Uh, and just so many of the com countries and, and corporations, private corporations and unscrupulous individuals, some of whom are even Africans, are on the continent taking advantage of, the, of chaos and disorder. We need people that care for our people in positions of power. We need Africans in the diaspora and Africans on the continent in, in positions of power and educated. And that also includes our sisters. And every time I come on, I'm going to stress we need sisters in serious leadership positions. Our sisters are the ones that hold our community accountable. In the comedic tradition, when we look at the virtues, uh, as my brother Reggie pointed out to me in the tour, uh, all the virtues are feminine. In our tradition, and Zynga and other queens have held our people, held those who got drunk with power accountable. So we need our sisters as part of the PAFM, but also in the future government and leadership of Africa at all levels. But we need y'all involved. Please uh, connect with Baba Jiwe, 
Baba Jumai, or myself. They don't have my info up there, but uh, you're welcome to reach out to me. Um, if you're, I specifically am right now, I'm the chief liaison for the New York State Board Data Committee. So if you're one of those uh, ambassadors or champions that Baba Jumai spoke of, please uh, connect with me. Uh, my number is 917-561-3581. That's 917-561-3581. Uh, you can also reach out to me as Asukili, A-S-U-K-I-L-E Mitchell on Facebook. And uh, I'm trying to connect with those who are the champions, those who are the ambassadors, and the organizations. This is a coalition. It's not an organization unto itself. It's supposed to be a coalition from the ground up the people at all levels organizations at all levels and the sole purpose of it is to help bring about the united african states that could help our people to move forward into the 21st 22nd 23rd century and the one thing that's different about this uh coalition that i'd like to point out is that we're not trying to acquire resources to continue the coalition we're trying to build a coalition with the sole purpose of uniting africa and those in the, in the diaspora of the uh, dual citizenship or whatever it be that we can do so that we can build the future together. And then once the government is, is, a, is in the rudimentary beginnings of establishing, this coalition will dissolve. It's not trying to be a UNIA. It's not trying to be National Action Network. It's not trying to be NAACP. Our sole purpose is, that, is to work to bring about the unification of African peoples under a government that will protect and defend us and under which we can grow our politics resources, our economics resources, that is, and culture. Nobody else is going to do it for us but us. So um, and we need sisters involved. So we need sisters in the New York State Committee, and there's actually a position uh, that it's open, if I'm not mistaken, right, Bobby uh, G. Way? Uh, we need a, a sister to coordinate the other sisters right do have sisters in the movement, but we have some positions that could definitely be filled and need to be filled by sisters. So any sisters that are listening, please, please uh, connect with Baba uh, Jiwe and Baba Jumai and, and come on in. But young people, I want to speak specifically to the young people. There's a lot of confusion out here. There's a lot of things being thrown at you on a lot of different agendas. The LGBTQ agenda, the trans agenda, the generational wealth agenda. All of these different agendas are being thrown at you, and it's a bunch of confusion. But we need to be clear that African people, just like all peoples, cannot succeed in this world if we don't build this system. Your individual family wealth can be taken away in a generation or two if it's not operating within the system of African people business and, and, and land ownership in the system. It promises the, the PAFM and what it hopes to bring about with the United African government is politics, economics, and culture working together in an Africanized system. So I, I hope you understand what I'm saying to you. Don't be swayed away from who you are, what you are. You are an African. Caribbean, you might be an African from uh, North America, you might be an African from Europe, but you are still an African. And every ethnic group of people knows who you are. So you should know who you are. Uh, uh, remind me, uh, I think I've said all I need to say. Okay. Stay on, stay on for a minute, I'll see you um, um, yes, yes, brother. brother. Close close the okay. Okay, they're about to close out. Baba Joe, you can do the closing. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, we want to thank you, Brother Clemson for Thank having you. us on this morning. It's been, a, it's been a, a enlightening and very helpful. And we hope that um, we can continue to uh, be in, in close contact and get your support in um, 
furthering our campaign. Um, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Uh, if you have anyone who is interested in um, becoming involved with our committee, please have them contact me or, or Brother Jemai, and we'd be glad to uh, introduce them into our movement. Well, I'm going to thank you, and uh, uh, I'm now going to apologize for what we have to work with you. Not a problem, but something that we may do, but we may have to work. The last thing I want to say is that we could also press hard for reparations. I mean, that's our, they owe it to us. And if we all come together around it, they got to give it to us. That's and that's the top of the All right. All right. Definitely. I'm going to let everybody know when I look forward to us to meeting us again real, real soon. soon. Very good. All right. All right. Peace. Peace. Amla. Away too. Amala. Away.